We are a good three metres now, I think, below the, the level of where the prisoner's war was before we started digging it away. Um, the good news is we're not going to go any deeper than this because we're now stood on bedrock. This was uh, definitely the bottom of what we think was the drawbridge pit in front of uh, the 13th century gatehouse, um, uh, which was the entrance to the castle at that time. And we've got these um, slots on either side, uh, which we think uh, are part of uh, the drawbridge mechanism. It's a bit... Um, we're still sort of working on this, still taking advice on how these things worked. Um, but they probably had wooden beams across these slots to provide a, a stop so that the drawbridge didn't sort of actually spin round. It was on a pivot um, which has been damaged on this side by the um, post-Second World War telephone cables that were put in there. But on the other side of the, uh, the trench, there's a, there's a hole where a beam came across and then the drawbridge probably rotated on that beam. And way up above us, up there, is um, a slot in the, um, in, uh, the sort of the face of the, uh, the arch above the gate where presumably there was a rope uh, down towards the end of the drawbridge to, to actually lift that end and then with a counterweight um, it was probably a relatively easy operation to, uh, to actually open and close the drawbridge. So yeah, we've, we've added, um, added a new bit of, new chapter of, of information to the castle. Yeah, I mean, because so, we knew how old Castle Cornet was. There's a lot of information online on the museum's website about mm. Castle Cornet, but this all adds to the story, including some of the finds that it you've does, discovered, yeah, and, yes, and some yeah. of those still need to be cleaned up yeah, and they do. looked we've at got, more closely. We've got a huge amount of finds, particularly uh, animal bone and pottery. There's a lot of domestic waste being thrown in here. Uh, we never did find any coins, which still surprises me a bit although we will check over the, the spoil heap before it goes back in. Um, but essentially it's mostly sort of the day-to-day -day rubbish of the people, soldiers living in the castle, that all got dumped in, in this space. And I think um, most of that filling in probably happened over a very short period. Mm -hmm. We haven't got, um, there isn't sort of 200 years of people going backwards and forwards and dropping stuff in here. Most probably two metres out of the, the nearly three metres have gone in on one occasion. So the piece of slate you showed me with the boat um, mm. engraved on it, that was found in this area That's that we're standing in. That's in part of this deposit yeah. um, and, and talking to, to people who know about medieval boats, it looks like 15th century. Uh, which fits in very well with the dating of the rest of the material we found. Yeah. This is likely to be the last time Castle Cornet's going to be subject to a dig like this for quite some time. It probably presumably. is. This, yeah, I mean, certainly this part of, of the castle, most of... I, 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 there's probably not much to be gained from excavating the prisoner's walk further back towards mm -hmm. the heart of the castle because I think it's nearly all on bedrock, so there's very little archaeology there. Um, there is a, a section here to the to the north um, but I would quite like to leave something for someone else to do you know maybe another two generations in, in the future it's two it's basically two generations since I started work here so I think um, I can uh, I can leave that for you know the next one or two uh, lots of archaeologists to come along